do a bit of a video about the cars I've had in the past. Um, I'm currently driving from the from the west coast of Scotland down to just north of Birmingham for a job tomorrow. Um, fixed the machine up in Scotland, and I'm now going down there down there to fix another one. Um, yeah, so my, my car history, it's been, once I've obviously explained it, you'll, you'll realise there's been a certain affinity towards one particular car, which I'm hopefully going to try and break that, break that affinity, because it's, it's getting pretty boring having the, the same, the same bloody car, all in various different guises. So yeah, so my first car, uh, passed, passed my driving test about maybe two months after turning 17 in the UK, you obviously got to be 17 to, to do do your driving lessons and get a get a driving license. So I passed me passed me test, went out looking for a car. I did want a Corsa, a Corsa C, preferably a black one. That was me me aim. Um, instead, I ended up with a Burgundy Mark II Clio, Mark II Renault Clio, a Phase 2 one, which was a 1.2 litre engine. Not particularly quick. It felt, obviously, at the age of 17, everything was just driven flat out. So it felt pretty quick sometimes. Um, the head gasket went two weeks after buying it, so that was basically the start of me learning how to fix cars. I'm, a, I'm an electrical engineer by trade, not not a mechanic. Um, yeah, so basically learn to fix cars is more of a, a necessity to get to work instead of an actual profession. But yeah, so the Mark II Clio, head gasket went um, pretty, pretty soon after buying it and I basically spent 12 months absolutely driving it into the ground. Um, painted a load of bits on it, gloss white, which looking back was, was pretty tacky. But for me, it was the it was my pride and joy. I love, love that bloody car. Um, and long and short of it, I went to put it in for a Temo T after having it for 12 months, and it came back with a failure list as long as as long as my arm which I thought, well, just get rid of it and scrap it. I also looked to renew the insurance. My first year's insurance was £2,650 on a car worth less than £1,000. So then the second year, I think it went down to about £1,600. I was, I was only an apprentice at the time. I didn't really have, didn't really have that type of cash kicking about. Um, so yes, yeah, so the first car was obviously the Clio. So that basically got sent off and got scrapped. I then bought, ridiculously, a Clio, another Clio, a Renault Clio Sport 172, a Phase 1, um, sitting in silver, which obviously for a second car at the age of 18 was, was, was alright. It was a pretty decent little car. Um, had that for about five five or six months and ended up ended up basically getting rid of it because the next car caught my eye um, by this point I'd been kind of doing my apprenticeship for so long that I enabled myself to get probably an extra pound an hour so I was feeling pretty flush and bought myself another Clio a Reynolds Sport Clio 182 this time in uh, Inferno Orange, which I kept that car for about two years, which was, uh, again, that was me, me absolute pride and joy. The Phase 1, uh, the, the 172 I had, I didn't really gel with that car. It was good, loved, loved the car, but I didn't really gel with the car that much. So, like I say, I bought the, the Phase 2 um, Inferno Orange, the, the, the baked bean colour. Mark II Clio, the, the 182, and I had that for a while. Spent spent an absolute fortune on it. Um, fitted, 
um, Catacom 421s to it, which was, I think at the time it was pretty unheard of of putting the 421s on it with standard management. It ran like an ab well, it idled like an absolute pig, um, but it had a had a hell of a lot of get up and go. It was a pretty pretty quick little thing. It had a cage in it, uh, Recaro trend lines, Speedline Torini. So it was kind of looking back, even compared to the cars I've got now. It, it was a pretty special, special little car. So I had that couple of air and decided to sell it. Got bored of like having a, a really uncomfortable old oldish car. So I bought a Reynolds Sport Clio 197, which I think you can start to see the affinity now. Bought the 197, the Nimbus Grey 197. And absolutely hated the car. It was so heavy with this, almost the same power, well, less power than the 182. It wasn't particularly quick, I didn't think. I think that's because in the, the Mark II Clios, they feel a lot more a lot more raw. Um, in, whereas in a Mark II Clio, if you're doing a 100 mile an hour on a private road in Mexico, obviously, it feels like you're doing a hundred mile an hour. In the Mark II, sorry, the Mark III, it did kind of feel as if you were just doing kind of sixty mile an hour. It was a lot more, a lot more refined. So I sold the one nine seven after about three or four, maybe five months of having it. Made a <laughs> humongous loss on the car, but sold it. In fact, no, I didn't. I part X the car. In for the next car, which was basically the, the salesman must have seen us coming because I parked next to the car, which was worth about probably about eight grand. Um, I parked next to that in for a Volkswagen Golf, a Mark IV Golf GD TDI. Parked next to it, I think, for 600 well, the car plus about 600 quid cash my way in a, a dodgy garage just outside Newcastle. Um, the Mark IV Golf was in uh, indigo blue. LB5N was the paint code. I knew that. It was pretty. That was my first introduction to kind of the whole stance nation type of thing. Where uh, it was basically on bloody, these these horrendous cheap eBay coilovers when I bought it. And yeah, had that had that car over a year, which was. Small miracle because I was doing doing a lot of miles in it then before I started buying kind of the nice nicer cars to have as a daily. Um, yeah, so I was doing a lot of miles in the Golf. The bloody paintwork was shocking, um, but I spent a lot of time, a lot of time and money on that car, getting it up to a half decent standard. And it was looked pretty special because on Mercedes AMG replica wheels. Had all the US spec front bumper, which was a pretty cool car. Lowered on some some new um, cheap eBay coilovers with chopped springs on the coilovers, so it would scrape like hell every time we went round the corner. Yeah, so basically had the Golf, um, started working away more and more away from home, and basically the Golf got completely ran into the ground again. When I came to part X that car for the next one, the next personal car that I had, um, which wasn't something that I was having for just for business, um, the car was it had one key. Um, I did have three keys when I bought the car. I had one key left because I'd lost the other two. It had three different sized wheels on it when I part X the car. It had a 15 on the front driver's side, 16 on the passenger side and a seven and two set two lots of 17s on the rear the door card was sorry the passenger side window kept dropping if the regulator snapped or the regulator had failed so the inside of the door card was filled with with clothes from a charity bag i found in the garage um just to keep the window up long enough to get us to the the dealership and part next to the car so I then kind of got my first really kind of special the 
car that I've, I do look back at and think that was a really special car. But it, at the same time as this, I had I then got a, a Citroen dispatch van to drive up and down the country in because at the end of the day, you can't be putting kind of thousand miles a week on a stand station golf. So I got the dispatch, then got rid of the Citroen dispatch, and ended up getting the Skoda Yeti as a daily, which was the possibly one of the best cars I've ever owned. I've done well over 100,000 miles in that car without a single issue. I think I had one puncture, which was in absolutely incredible. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant car. So yeah, got it. Like I say, that's, 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 that, that was the work car that I had at the time. And then I got a... Went to part the Golf, as I was saying before. And part X'd it. Got 500 quid part X or what I thought was 500 quid part X against a Astra VXR the black Astra VXR which I mean I, I was looking around for a new car for, for months looking at the Focus STs the the Megane 225s for, for a Renault kind of a, a self-confessed Renault nut the Megane 225 didn't really feel that special it was then test drove the VXR and the thing was the thing was just plumbing so so kind of yobbish it was the decision was made there and then I basically done that paid paid quite a bit of cash for it then took a little bit of money out on finance and basically looking back the golf that I part next um I didn't actually get a penny for it because it was all it was all kind of wrapped up in this finance thing that I was getting and at the end of the, the whole thing worked out I got nothing for the golf which was nice. Uh, granted, it would have it would have been getting sent off for auction, and the the dealership probably got less than less than five hundred quid for it. But I got bugger all for the car. So I had the um, had the VXR. Loved, absolutely love the VXR, and that was um, bought it completely standard. Ended up fitting it on Ibach Lauren Springs, which were they were pretty nice. It drove really nice for them, and fitting the full. Full big front mount in the cooler, big air tech in the cooler. Um, upgraded inlet manifold. Uh, st still on the standard turbo, but then fitted a Cobra double decat exhaust onto it with no silence as a non resonated one. And it was loud as hell. Absolutely ridiculous. Uh -huh. Yeah, so I had that. That was mapped by. Um, R&D Motorsport, which has had all the launch control and ignition cuts, obviously at the time, I think I was only early quite early 20s um, I was ignition cutting it away from bloody round, well, ignition cutting launch control it away from round and and everything Pretty, pretty good car. I love, I love that VX. I would have, I would have another one of them in a heartbeat. It did have a very, very slight issue with gearboxes. Um, luckily, I, I didn't. I can't used to keep on top of mine. I always kept on top of my cars for maintenance. I think good oil and everything like that's massively essential. Um, so I was using quite an expensive gearbox oil in the Volkswagen M32 box didn't really have any issues but then the week after I saw it the guy I saw it knew, the box had blew itself to smithereens so a bit of a shame sold that car to a guy from uh, from Bristol who he actually flew from Bristol to Newcastle I picked him up at the airport this is how cheap I'd obviously listed the car for because this, this guy probably snapped me hard enough paid as the full asking price and that was that so quite nice to free up a bit of free up a bit of the cash but basically ended up at the time I then got a Hyundai i40 Tura as a, a work car so that again done well over a hundred thousand miles in the i40 which was unbelievable that car was I think less than 30 grand those cars new uh, well they are less than 30 grand for the a premium version and 
it had absolutely every optional extra. And it was had a heated steering wheel, heated and cooled seats, and heated seats are my one, my one requirement. I, I love heated seats in a car. Um, so yeah, so I had the high Hyundai at the time, and then I think I changed jobs and ended up getting rid of the high Hyundai because the company I was going to were given as a company car, which was a, a Skoda Octavia, an Octavia Green Line. Which I went all over, all over Europe in that one, in that car. I used to get the get the ferry from from Newcastle to Amsterdam, and then just drive it all over mainland Europe, in between all my customers. It was a pretty pretty decent car. It was a pretty low spec car, but it was it wasn't too bad. I, I quite like that. So at the time then, I was working I was working overseas extensively. Um, ended up living in, in Germany in Hanover for six to seven months where I actually bought a Vauxhall well, an Opel Astra Caravan which is a basically an Astra estate it was a it was all right that it was pretty decent that was quite a nice spec car but it it wasn't very good on the on the autobahn So the battery died on my phone there. Um, where was I? Yeah, the, the Opel Astra Caravan when I was living in Germany. At the same time I had the, the Octavia um, company car. So yeah, so I was working in Germany for kind of weeks and weeks on end. And then I would come home and obviously had the, the Octavia sat here, sat at home. And decided that I wanted another kind of fast car so you guessed it I went and bought another Clio um, bought a 2004 a late 2004 I think it was a 54 player one um, Renault Clio 182 cup no it wasn't it was a 182 with both the cup packs in arctic blue which was the, the kind of nice dark blue that they used to do um, and bought that from a guy up in a guy up in Scotland got it home and basically didn't insure it didn't tax it well registered as sawn and then set about making it into a I got it in my head I wanted a kind of a big track weapon uh, like a track car so ended up ploughing a fortune into the the little Clio. Um, Gaz, was it Gaz? No, it wasn't. It was KWV1 suspension, um, a full cage, harnesses, um, set of Recaro's, again another set of Torini wheels. I bought a set of Team Dynamic 1.2s to put on it. Here's a set of 15 inch track wheels, anti roll bar, um, pure motorsport, stiffening. Uh, wishbones, everything. Spent a fortune on the car, then got home one day and decided it's not for me. And basically ended up breaking off parts. Lost a fortune on the car. Managed to sell all the parts off pretty quickly because they're all brand new. But yeah, I lost a lost a small fortune on that car on the Clio. Uh, broke it for parts, which was a bit of a, a bit of a shame because it was a pretty nice example. Um, yes, yeah, so then stopped working in Germany and got rid of the so got rid of the Opel Astra, the, the caravan, and the estate, and then got home had the just the Octavia. Once I broke that for parts, again decided I wanted something else, so went out and bought another Arctic Blue Clio 182, and drove that home. And the defacer was rattling on it, so needed the belts done. So I broke that for parts because <laughs> I can do the belts on them pretty easily, but for some reason just broke it for parts. Paid paid six hundred quid for the car and made made about fourteen fourteen fifteen hundred quid back just off the parts um, off that car. So it was a nice little nice little return. It had a few aftermarket bits and bits and bobs on it. So then 
started thinking, well, you can break these for to make a nice little bit of profit off them. So I bought a Pearl Black 172, broke that for parts, and then bought another Pearl Black 172 from a farm. So the whole underside of it was covered in mud and cow shit and everything. It was, that was more hassle to take parts off than anything, anything I've ever known, purely because the state of the underneath of it was just covered in mud. So yeah, so broke a couple of the Clio's and then decided I wanted another Clio. No, I actually left, left the company that I was working for that gave us the company car, came to the company I'm at now um, and ended up getting a Volkswagen Passat as a daily driver, um, kind of a 15 plate, 2015 Volkswagen Passat, um, SE business one which is pretty nice, it's nice, I've got, that's what I'm driving now, I've done again nearly, nearly 100,000 miles in this car, so it will be, it will be going soon, I will be getting rid of it for something else. But yeah, so I got the Passat then, um, bought, what did I buy after that? It was a, another Vauxhall, I bought another Vauxhall, this time it was a Vauxhall Astra, um, JSI, so it was the shape before the VXR, but the, the JSI version in the, um, kind of the Arden blue colour. That was that was a pretty pretty cool car. Bought it, managed to pick the car up for I think sixteen hundred quid I paid for the car, which was next to nothing. They were going for kind of three grand. Paid sixteen hundred quid for this car, um, and ended up getting it home, realizing it had an absolutely catastrophic oil leak to the point that it had actually done in five liters of oil driving it about. 12 miles home so got it back and the guy had said it had a bit of an oil leak but I didn't realise the extent of it got the car back and set about obviously having a look and seeing what was wrong with it pulled it apart and it turned out that the it was pissing oil out of the oil filter housing so looking around looking at all the all the forums all the Facebook pages it was said oh well the, the filter, if the filter housing's broken, it could be could need a new oil cooler or something like that. So it could have been potentially quite costly, well, a couple hundred quid. Took the, the sandwich plate off that the oil uh, cooler goes onto, and noticed there was a little a little o-ring on the back of that that was perished. Um, so set about looking for a new o-ring. There was no Vauxhall dealers in the northeast had one. Um, and ended up actually driving, I can't even remember where it is now, but I, I remember driving about two hours down the motorway to um, Autovox, who are a, a Vauxhall, well a Vauxhall OEM and aftermarket parts supplier for a £1.25 O-ring. Um, really, I say, used probably a hundred times more in petrol than what I would have paid if I had just got it delivered on the day. But I obviously wanted the part on the day to go and fit it um, on the part on the car. So yeah, got the got that fixed. Um, drove it for a while, fitted a bigger intercooler onto it, um, a bigger inlet, everything like that. Fit a couple, good few hundred quid's worth of parts to it. Um, then put it back up for sale because uh, basically the in, the interior on it wasn't wasn't a very nice place to be. I didn't didn't really like like driving the car. I didn't I wanted it because I thought it was going to be a, a replacement for the VXR I had, but it wasn't. It was nowhere near. Um, it was quick. It was 300, 300 horsepower the VXR, and the the JSI was about two hundred and sixty horsepower apparently. But obviously the VXR was a lot newer. It had nicer seats, and it was a nicer place to be. Yeah, sold the. Um, Astra, the Astra JSI for a pretty, pretty modest profit in the end. Um, and yeah, what was I? What did I get after that? I 
had, well, oh, after the Astra, I got the car that I've got now. Uh, obviously, the, still got the Passat at this point. Um, I forgot to bought my missus. Uh, bought her a, a 3 Series, BMW 3 Series, a E92 3 Series. Um, convertible in white, 320, because anything bigger than that she'll kill herself. Um, bought that with, bought a really, really low mileage example of that, just, she's still got that. Um, that'll hold its money all day long because the miles on it. It's a pretty, pretty nice little car. Um, waste of time her having a convertible because I can count on one hand the amount of time she's actually had the roof down on it. I'm not allowed to drive it, naturally. But it's a, yeah, it's a pretty, pretty nice car. Yeah, so we've got the E92. Um, I sold the JSI. I sold the JSI on New Year's Eve. It was, it was New Year's Eve. And by New Year, on New Year's Day, well, the day after New Year's Day, I had a train booked to go and buy a new car. I'm a, I'm a bit like that. I tend to have the money sat there burning the hole in my pocket and end up just jumping in, jumping in and buying something else. So basically, looking around, I thought, ah, oh, should I get another Clio? Or should I look and maybe buy a Clio to, to break for parts? Um, and a car came up which caught my eye straight away. Um, didn't quite believe how cheap it was up for. And it was the petrol blue Clio 182 that I own now. Um, yeah, so I've had that quite a while now. But the petrol blue one, it was up for it was up for not much money for what it for what it is. The guy I went up. I basically sent the guy a message at 10 o'clock at night saying send us a photo of the logbook knowing that the the Clio 182 is in petrol blue were registered as being green because petrol blue was originally going to be called paddock green because it is it is more of a green colour there's more green in it than blue um, and yeah so he sent the photo of the logbook back sent told, told us about, all about the history of it everything like that and that was that. Decided to book a train to go up and pick the car up. I already had insurance and everything on it before. Um, I even booked a train to go up and have a look. And I knew I was coming home with it for the price it was up for. I think I possibly could have bought that car, brought it back, and wrote a, a better advert for the car. This fucking lorry's going so slow. Um, wrote a better advert for the car. It probably made a grand profit on the car pretty pretty easily uh, we got it home we got it most of the way home and fifth gear went in the gearbox so there was no more fifth gear the Clio's are obviously pretty notorious for the for the gearbox is gone so yeah gearbox went well fifth gear went in the gearbox so I had to drive it about 100 135 mile in fourth gear with an exhaust that had a massive hole in it a load of really like worn bushes so the car was vibrating, vibrating the hell out of us coming home. Um, See, so yeah, that was a pretty long drive getting that home. The only good thing was, obviously, McDonald's up in Scotland do Iron Brew. I do like me Iron Brew. So they do Iron Brew out there, uh, out of the, the pop machine, which is, that's pretty, pretty good. So I always stock up. On a couple of those to get us get us through a big journey journey back home, but yeah, so got the, the petrol blue one a two home, and like I say, obviously the knew it needed a new box or it needed a box rebuild. Now sat and thought, well, why don't I just try and make the car as as perfect as I can? Maybe a, a factory fresh, minty fresh version. Um, so. Took the, went to take the engine out, well, went to take the gearbox out and decided to pull the pull the engine out as well. I knew the sump gasket was leaking on that car, so um, knew it, it's a lot easier to change the, the sump gasket, obviously, with the engine out, because the sump catches on the subframe on the Clio's. Um, got that out, 
got the edges out, painted it all up, everything like that. That was all all hunky dory. The engine was pristine, absolutely pristine. Fitted a new box to it. Well, fitted a box that I had in the garage um, off one of the Clio's that I'd broken that I hadn't managed to sell. So there was a JC5130 box, which, funny enough, is the just the right box for the 182. It was fitted to a, one, a 172, but obviously the speedo wouldn't have worked or anything like that. I think it was just a, a one of those boxes that was fitted to get get the car back on the road. So yeah, fitted the box. That was lovely. Car drove drove out the garage under its own steam, and on the first day out driving it, noticed there was a bit of a crunch going into first gear. So thought ah well it needs another box eventually uh didn't really bother us because first gear in in those cars you're always revving them all revving them up the tits off them so you only really use first gear in the in the car to get away if you double clutch it didn't crunch so yeah done that spent spent a, a hell of a lot of money on the car to be honest getting it back up to a, a pretty high standard and and fell out, fell out of love with it really. Um, completely fell out of love with the car and put it up for sale. So this this was maybe about six six weeks ago. Put the car up for sale. Got a hell of a lot of interest. There was over well, I think it was about three hundred people watching it on uh, on eBay. I was getting texts here, there, and everywhere. There was people wanting to swap for kind of newish Civic Type R's, things like that. And I, so I was holding out for a cash buyer, had a guy really interested, um, to the point where he was gonna come pick the car up. And I said, I'll tell you what, I'll go and put 12 months MOT on the car. So this would have only been about three weeks ago. Put 12 months, I said, I'll stick 12 months MOT on the car. Confident that it'll pass. Um, and drove it for the MOT. The one thing I'd overlooked was the one of the rear tyres was a little bit dodgy. So I said to the, the guy that was going to do the MOT, I said, I tell you what, I'll go home. I've got a spare set of wheels. I'll stick the spare wheels on the car. Um, just that we know 100% it's going to go through a through a, a proper proper MOT and not a not kind of a black MOT. Um, driving it back to his garage. Obviously, you've probably seen some of my other videos. I've, fucking blew it up blew the box up blew the uh well we're still to, still to figure out if the the engine's all right but go for a cheeky overtake yeah so blew the box up and had to get the car recovered home and that's kind of where we are now so i probably missed out a couple of cars it's worth noting that this road I'm on now is the the A76 uh, that takes us back on the A74 to head down on the M6 and home. Well, down M6 and down to uh, Birmingham. But it's an absolutely incredible driving road. It's, it's a lovely, lovely, lovely road to drive. Um, I used to have a customer in this neck of the woods in a previous company, and I used to drive this two or well, at least once or twice a week. Um, but it's an absolutely brilliant driving road, pretty picturesque place to be. So, guys, uh, so I think that's about it for my car history. It's been quite checkered. Uh, um, I've, I've probably forgot at least at least a handful of cars on the list. Um, and yeah, so let's think. It's so currently got the Passat. We've, we've definitely mentioned the Passat. The Passat's the trusty trusty little workhorse it was a good good little thing I've, I haven't had many issues at all with this Passat I've had well it's had, that, is that a new box? no the clutch went on it clutch went on it at 59,992 miles 8 miles away from the warranty period being up on the car so it had a new clutch under kind of EW warranty it's just had little bits and pieces from uh Pretty good on a set of tyres, it'll do. I think I've been doing about 35,000 on a set of tyres. It's the 1.6 diesel sat, and it's a 
good, a good car, as Danny DC2 would say, a good car. Um, yeah, so that's it. I might maybe do a, a little bit of a, a review on this car because it's. I'll be getting rid of this in the next six months, I think. So I might do a review on this and then a, maybe compare it to the the new the new workhorse that I've on. I've already got me got me right set on on something. So I yeah, so I'm gonna enjoy me drive on the A76 in the trusty old Passat. Um, I've inevitably missed out some cars from your car history. Been a bit of a check and past. Um, seem to buy cars more often than than more pe most people. But I say, as, as a wise man once told me, everybody's got to have a passion. Mine, unfortunately, seems to be Reynolds or shitty, shitty cars. But yeah. What can we do? Tara.